Hello and welcome! In today's episode we will be going to Duna and we're gonna do this flying this amazing craft that Indian Cargo Bay has a small lander which we will undock and hopefully land on Duna and stick the proudly the flag of ground forks into the Duna soil. Let's go! So we are gonna take the Mark III Cockatoo capsule. That's one of the new ones that is in KSP2. It hasn't been around at KSP1. Uh, the next thing that I want to take is I want to take the reaction wheels because the capsules reaction wheels have been severely nerfed in KSP2 so you really do need reaction wheels. Following that to be able to do anything you need batteries so I'm going to be placing batteries. Yeah, we are going straight into the construction, gung-ho. Alright, then we have the solar panels. I'm thinking that I will probably want to recreate the craft that is actually similar to the one that you see on the basically start screen because I figured well the start screen has a decent frame rate so if I build that one I'll probably gonna have the good experience too. Okay this is actually the previous Mark III cockpit I need the cargo bay that actually is round so I'm thinking like this one. Is this the one that I'm looking for? Yes! Alright so that's the cargo bay and what I'm gonna be placing is Yes, here inside I will be placing my lander, but before we actually do that I want to be making sure that I place the other components and I'm gonna place the large, oh that's an extra large, no not that one, large, longish, yeah that looks good. That is actually I think hydrogen fuel and we'll need hydrogen fuel to get to Duna because I plan to use the hydrogen mm, engines. And uh, actually I'm gonna experiment. Shall I use the methane or hydrogen? That's a good question. Let me check a little bit of the landing, oh sorry, of the engines. So when it comes to hydrogen we have this guy, the nuclear propulsion and that one actually looks cool. That gives us 4.9 thousand meters per second with the current configuration and I think it is actually good. So yeah, I'm gonna keep it like that. Let's place the solar panels at the back and then I'm probably gonna go and build the actual launch vehicle. So let me see if I need to first find a decoupler and then the adapter. So let's see, stack separator. Yeah, I think it's better that we have a stack separator than a decoupler here. By the way, I'm do I was doing this before the KSP2 was out. So, yeah, I did a lot of missions. I tried to get as much content for you guys as possible. So, yeah. Sorry about that. Some bugs have already been fixed at the date of the launch. There was a fix just prior to the launch. So, some things were corrected that you might see here, but it's okay. Vessel has a command point and no parachute. Okay. Then let's actually place another of the big tank. No, that's an XL tank. I need a large tank. Okay, so how is now thrust to weight? Okay, delta V is 8.3 thousand meters per second and that's definitely something that is really good. I just wanted to raise this up as much as I could. Engineer's report. Uh, let me see. Okay, like this we have 4.7 thousand meters per second and with this connected we have 8.3. Okay, uh, that's a hefty thrust, that's a hefty amount of delta V. Let me just see, uh, normally the planner says that you need 10,000 for Duna, I actually challenge that. Because I'm not putting, I'm doing sort of like, not really an Apollo, but almost like an Apollo style lander. Basically only the lander will be landing on Duna, and later on we might actually ditch it. So yeah, okay. There we go. Fins. Fins are really important because uh, Kerbin's KSP2, Kerbin's atmosphere is very soupy and affects, affected by drag a lot. I, I just assume that it's because it, haven't been, it hasn't been balanced yet correctly. So uh, let me see. I want to put the docking port here. Come on. Yeah, there we go. Senior docking port. And then we place this capsule. And then we're gonna place the reaction wheels. And then we're gonna be placing some batteries. Yes. I just want to make sure that everything fits inside. Then I'm, we're gonna place a tank. That one or a bigger one. 
Maybe a bigger tank wouldn't. No, actually, I think the bigger one won't work here because when I place the landing engine, yeah, it will gonna, it's gonna clip in. Okay, smaller tank it is. One by popular vote, we're gonna take the smaller tank. Thank you, good. Now let's see what engine, and maybe we can put it like this, a combo. Oh, no, that's gonna clip in as well. All right, uh, where is the other engine when you need one? We could actually take this, but I think Skipper is way too powerful. Let's place the landing legs. I'm gonna take four of them. There we go. I'm actually so used to building this craft in inside of the cargo bay that I completely forgot that you can actually take it out and build it on as a separate note. That's the KSP1 player in me. Sorry about that, guys. All right, as you can tell, I could take it out and I could actually do it separately. So then I realized I actually need to put another docking port here. And now I was actually trying to find, this is gonna be the, so let me quickly check in terms of the launch sequence. So let's see, okay, 2.8 thousand meters per second. I don't know what thrust to weight is on this one. Well, let me just quickly put it here, there we go. Then we want to make sure that we have the tuna can and I think we need the solar panels as well here. Battery, I think we have, we need solar panels and parachutes. So I'm gonna put two radial chutes here. There we go. And then we need to see, do these landing legs when extended, are they good? I need also a drogue chute. We'd also need some lights. So do we have any good lights for that? Light strips? Yeah, let's play some light strips. Let, let, it, let it light nicely. All right. So with that thing put in, good. Now we are at 8,060. So only thing that I need more are the solar panels. And uh, let me just quickly see monoprop. I could actually use some monoprop because we will need it to dock. This thing will actually go down and then it will dock hopefully back. Okay, so after some fiddlage, I was able to find the RCS thrusters. They were actually in the RCS section, not the monoprop engine or something like that. That's uh, good to know. So I have actually placed them and now let us connect this one inside. Good. I think that's our payload. So we're gonna close the cargo bay and now we have to focus on getting this ship into the orbit. All right, what is its current thrust to weight? I think that's actually wrong because it's probably has this engine as the last stage. Okay, we need to check our staging. So first one is the Rhino, then it's this engine. So let me just quickly correct my staging. I think that should be fine. There we go. Now thrust to weight is 1.7 and I think that one is actually now good. So there are some corrections that I would like. It's 8,000, so it's not actually stellar. Let me build some struts. I just want to make sure that I strut as much as I can. Because right now, you know, the rockets are wobbly, it's KSP2 launch, and well, we want to make them more rigid. And by the way, before you guys know, tell me, you know, you could change it in the config, but agreed but I actually found out that only later after I built this. I added two side boosters, Clydesdale, and those will actually help me get up. It's not that it will, we wouldn't have enough of Delta V, but these are actually more, you know, really, as you can see, my clouds are all really, really fuzzy and puffy. And uh, someone told me because I'm playing at 1080p, it could be, but I have a monitor that's ultra wide 3440 by 10440 and that one uh, if I make if I play full screen you guys won't be able to see anything because it's too wide and if I play 14040p I have 2080 then you will be seeing the PowerPoint presentation actually maybe not the PowerPoint presentation but it will be significantly slow so this was basically my compromise. So let's make a maneuver node and we're gonna plane the maneuver node just to get us orbital. By the way, I, at the time of this recording or recording the audio, which has actually was like way after the launch, it was basically today when I'm, this is gonna be published. 
uh, I have gotten some tools that help out with planning maneuver node and making sure that this is actually their progress. So do check them out on spacedoc.info. There are some handy tools that actually can help you in terms of the early problems with the early access build of the KSP2. Namely, the two mods that I really like is to have the periapsis and the apoapsis values persist as you burn, so you can actually see them. And the other one was, I think, fine maneuver node planner, which was sorely missing from this when I was actually recording this. So let's hit the burn and uh, hopefully we will be able to reach orbit. So apoapsis is at 200 kilometers and periapsis is raising quickly. I gotta tell them, I'm really enjoying the graphics and I'm really enjoying the sound design. The sound design of KSP2 is phenomenal. It's, uh, I, I don't, I cannot emphasize it enough. So it's, it's really the, the way it should be. Okay, so right now we are actually gonna do very inefficient transfer. So we're gonna just eject out of the Kerbin Sphere of Influence and hope that we intersect Duna. That's all there is to it. We're not going to do anything more fancy than that. So as you can tell, we are just now trying to see if we can get an alignment with Duna. There we go. A little bit further out. Okay, so the idea was that I get I1 and I2. I1 and I2 stands for intersect 1 and intersect 2. It's the places where the trajectory of my craft will be intersecting the trajectory of Duna. So we have 22 meters per second for the burn. I do apologize for a little bit camera fiddlage. I'm actually new to this. <laughs> Aren't we all? And burn. So there we go. I did have some uh, basically SAS issues as it settles down because uh, of my oversteering, but that was my own fault. It's not the fault of the KSP. There we go, hitting the burn and we have staged and now we're engaging the hydrogen engine. All right, so what I wanted to do, the one thing with, uh, which I think is bugged that now the maneuver note, it didn't upgrade. It did decrease in terms of the requirements, but it still was displaying the required delta V. So that was one of the bugs that I have noticed that happens. Okay, so we are intersecting Duna's trajectory. And right now what bugs me is that it doesn't show intersect nodes. However, if we create, okay, I've just reduced the apoapsis by a little bit. I want to basically focus Duna, set target, or actually not focus, but set it as a target, and create a maneuver node. So I'm gonna drag it here, and now I'm gonna be extruding or re retracting as much to secure that we have a good enough encounter here, the idea is that I get points I2 target and I2 to align. So I'm actually just trying now. Oh, there was, there was a intersect. There we go. So this is the idea. Now, when we reduce our periapsis on the next pass, we will be going to Duna. So let me just hit time acceleration, which goes completely nuts. And the burn will be starting in three hours and 37 minutes. Let me just orient my craft maneuver prograde it is good and we are here so now it's going to happen in two minutes kalul kerman is so happy to be going places right 50 40 30 20 5 4 3 2 1 and let's burn and enough good Apparently, I've burned too much in the one direction, so what I should be doing, I should go directly the opposite and burn a little until I get back my Duna encounter. Because I2 and I2 target have not aligned. Oh, there we go. Small burn, and now we have. So I'm here, I'm going to create a maneuver node. Guys, don't go burn to this point, because if you do, this is going to happen. So what happened for me, you just skipped over that maneuver node and probably maneuver node was placed in the wrong place to begin with but it's really it wasn't on the first orbit it was on the second probably shown by color but that was kind of a problem 
So what I needed to do, that's one of the bugs. So if that happens to you, then I have to do a couple of laps around Duna and hopefully when the targets align again, you will have a decent orbit. So be really careful. So at this point I have create, decided to create another maneuver node and here we have an intersect with Duna. This time I was going to be smarter. So what I'm going to do now is just to tweak that maneuver node ever so little, point the craft maneuver prograde and then we're going to do the burn in one hour and ten minutes hopefully. You see, this is actually wrong. It's not one hour, 10 minutes, it's a full orbit away. So devs, please fix this. This start burn in T minus, it's actually very misleading. It should be like three weeks, two days and something like that, or one year, you know, four months or whatever. Also, another note to the devs, these numbers are really counting down fast. You don't need to do that frequently to update. It churns up your um, processing power. So, yeah. All right, so the burn will be in 15 minutes, roughly. I'm gonna decelerate the, the warp manually because I don't want it to. Okay, getting ready. It's 75 meters per second, so it's a, it's a small burn. Three, two, one, and go, and there we go. All right. So I'm going to burn just gently until these two. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. So typically I take down the maneuver node and then I burn a little just to make sure that they're aligned. So, okay, this time I'm going to be smarter. I'm going to time warp to this point and hopefully we won't overshoot again. And immediately I paused and then I reduced the time warp because I cannot trust the game at this point. I'm sorry, devs. I love KSP too, but yeah, and I want to be keeping playing it, so yeah. You never know on which... Uh, maybe the solution would be when you click him to create maneuver node, that the maneuver node is on the color of the current orbit. Light blue if it's like current, or dark blue, almost purplish, if it's the second one. Alright, I'm coming in, and when I come in, then I'm going to be fixing my trajectory. Okay, so as you can see, the trajectory is south polar. I need to fix that. I'm going to create the maneuver node and I'm going to make sure that I align it so that it's equatorial to Duna roughly. So let me go quickly. Okay. Stop fighting me, damn it. Okay, there's another way where we could actually just burn retrograde here. Ah, now it works. Okay, so we couldn't create a maneuver node while paused. That was the problem. I didn't know that, that I didn't know that before. Okay, so let me quickly just adjust that maneuver node so that it is equatorial to Duna. And the periapsis should be very close to Duna. So it's not a big burn, but we have to be really careful. We have 4100 1.1 thousand meters per second, so that's actually handy. All right. So let's focus and point the craft maneuver prograde. Focus. Now we're focusing on Duna. Okay, so the burn will be in 10, 9, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. We're gonna do the burn. We're just gonna making sure that we align this nicely. Okay, periapsis 129. Now it's straight going straight for Duna. We should actually correct this. So let's focus back on the craft. Create another maneuver node. We're going to take it outwards, focus back on Duna. This is actually a handy way how you can do this if you want such maneuvers. So you focus on Duna and now you can actually just make sure that your periapsis is 
almost equatorial, 21,000, 33,000. I want it to be 60 to 100, 74. That's good enough. I'm going to take it. Then you point the craft maneuver prograde. It's pointing. Good. And then we warp to the maneuver. There we go. 30 seconds. Getting ready to do the burn. We can actually already do the burn. It doesn't matter. All right. Let's actually burn not normal, but radial out. You see, sometimes I have to fill manually. <laughs> so manual in, manual out. Yeah, it's really bad. Okay, we burn it. Fortunately enough, I know what radial out means. So that we're radial in so that we can make sure that we are burning, getting periapsis under control. Okay, it's 99 kilometers. Then I'm going to create a maneuver node. I don't want to waste any more delta V. I'm going to create a maneuver node that will put us into the orbit and the low orbit for 999. So there we go. By the way, guys, there has been another work of another bug that I'm going to show off later. Uh, and you need to be warned about it because that one is really, really tricky. If that one happens, then you are in big trouble. So let me let us just enjoy for the time being. Uh, we're going to test and see how does it look when we are approaching Duna. Beautiful. There we go. So serene. Our craft is coming towards Duna and I... Why does it feel it's stagnating? I mean, it's really... Feels a little bit off, to be honest. I have no idea. Just feels like it. All right. And also, this one, I'm accelerating the, the view that wants to rotate. What the hell's wrong with that? I'm not sure. I mean, I like, I like to frame my views and I like that it's not panning. So, don't know. Maybe there's a key press that you could use to disable it. All right, we're coming into Duna. Burn will be in 10 minutes. Now that's a hefty screenshot, isn't it? All right. Burn will be in four minutes. So first we need to position ourselves in the Duna's orbit. So. We are close to periapsis, 41 seconds. I've just decided to turn the craft so I can see it nicely. And we're going to do a beautiful burn. Okay. 15. Kalul, you get ready. And burn. I really like the graphics and the plumes. This looks phenomenal. As said, I'm really enjoying it. This, the game is actually really, really beautiful. There we go. Let's open up the cargo bay and then we're going to decouple this bad boy. Yeah, the vessel is out of fuel. That's another ugly bug because while I was burning hydrogen, uh, stage two was burning methane. How? I don't know. The engine wasn't enabled. So by the time I realized that I was actually furious because I managed to do everything right. I filled with the maneuver nodes, got here, and then all of a sudden I couldn't do anything. Take a look at this. But by the way, if that happens to you, just go to your craft and select it. You will still be able to control it. Nothing bad has happened to the craft. Just be careful and know it. I mean, some of the bugs were fixed, but it was really a frustrating experience. And the fact that I didn't have any fuel was um, very, very problematic to say the least. However, when I say no fuel, that's not entirely correct. I have decided to use the monoprop to land on e on Duna. We have come to land on Duna and we will land on Duna. So I'm going to point my craft retrograde. And I'm just going to use the rest of my monoprop to get us there. I just wanted to see if there is a way where we could actually do that. So we land on the sunny side. So here we go. 
pointing retrograde and now I'm going to engage the RCS and I'm going to burn using the RCS. Here we go. Painfully slow, but we can do it. So we're raising the, we're lowering the periapsis to be very, very low. And I was actually trying to figure out why it wasn't working. It's only later that I have found that the bug was where it actually completely drained the fuel. Why? I have no idea. And the fact is that I never even consumed the fuel and the fuel crossfeed was off. So, yeah. Devs, please fix the game. I love it. I'm going to play it. I'm going to enjoy it. And I'm going to make a lot of videos on it. But please fix the game. All right. So we are approaching Duna and we are now going to get into the Os... Listen to the music. By the way, the music is a little bit botched and that's basically because I have actually accelerated this video two times so that you don't get, uh, you know, that you get a decent frame rate. Sorry about that. But note the score. It feels like you're going places, you're exploring things. I mean, it's the music alone that gets me excited for this game let alone everything else. I think the game, once the, when it's fixed, it will be amazing. And I've seen actually that a lot of you guys in the community have decided, yeah, it's not really good, but I'm gonna hold on to it because I want to support the devs, so like... And we're, we're gonna wait until the devs fix it. So some people did refund and I completely understand they have a valid point, but those that you are holding on to, well, you're actually helping the devs make the, the game great. And you guys that have refunded, you can always buy later on, hopefully when it gets good. I completely understand 50, I mean, dollars is a big ask. So yeah. All right. So now we are going places, yes. There we go, we are coming down. So now, we have come to the second problem. As you know, there are propulsive landings on Mars are really not, are really something that needs to be done because uh, you need a combination of both chutes, sky cranes, but you do need propulsive landing. Here, I don't have propulsion because for whatever reason, uh, yeah, the stage was drained. So this is gonna be a hard landing. Kelbald, I really hope you will survive, buddy. At this point, I'm coming close. I'm going to hit the chutes. We are slowing down and let's hope that we don't become another splatter on the wall. Legs down. Okay, decelerate. 60, 40, 30, 20. Okay, that's good. Well, it's still fast. Look at this. This is the reason why I love KSP 2. This is the reason why I love KSP in the first place. And this as well. Well, <laughs> yeah. Okay, beautiful, look at this. Stranded, episode two, one. <laughs> so let's get our solar panels out so that the craft manages to land and then we're gonna take out our Kerbal and we're gonna be proudly sticking up the flag. So there we go. Go and let, please do stick that flag, will ya? Jumpity jump, jump, jump. Yeah, all right, look at him go, beautiful. Now, yeah, I can see you're dancing. I, I understand, buddy. So what we want to do, we want to plant the flag. All right, let's plant the flag. Do not conquered. Yes, we did, but we never thought about return. So you, congratulations, you have become the Duna's first colonist. Yeah. All right, with that thing being said, Hope you do, that you have liked today's episode. Hit a like on it and do subscribe. There will be more KSP2 content coming, especially with this guy scratching his butt. Well, I'll see you in the next one.